If you're a new or returning player, you are probably completely overwhelmed looking on the internet in GTA Online and just seeing all these different things you can buy. Well, today I'm going to try and make that a little bit easier for you. I'm going to rank every business in GTA Online in terms of money-making capabilities. So this is going to give you a good idea of where to start and give you a pretty good idea of what can pay you the most money. There are almost 20 businesses in GTA Online now. And considering when the game launched, there were only garages and apartments to buy, that's a big change for a lot of players coming back to the game. I need to start this video off by saying this is not a guide on how to use each of these businesses. This is a video of me giving my rankings on which ones are best. If you want to know how to use these businesses, I'll leave links to all of the videos I've made on every business in the game in the description below. So go check those out if you want to learn how to use them. So if you enjoy this video, a thumbs up would be awesome. Sub for more stuff like this. Let's jump in. All right, starting off at the very very bottom. A lot of people probably forgot this property existed in the game at all because not many people use it consistently. It's the Arena Workshop. In terms of making money, this one ranks dead last. The workshop does have some pretty cool features. Those features are a 30 car garage and an on-site mechanic that can upgrade your Arena War vehicles. But in terms of making money, the only real way to do it is with Arena War and you don't even need the workshop to start those up. So this one, dead last. Second from the bottom, is the document of forgery office this one is the worst mc business by far and it's not particularly close even with all of the upgrades to this business, taking buying supplies into account, you're only going to make a maximum of $20,000 an hour from this business. To be fair, yes, it is a passive business, so you don't really have to work too much for that money. But still, there is not another business in the game that is worse than this one. Next up is the penthouse. Again, this is one of the least useful properties in the game. And in terms of making money, the only missions you can start with this are the Casino Agatha Baker story missions which really don't pay you that much. The first time through them though, upon completion, you're gonna get first time bonuses. Plus if you host all of the missions and complete them in order, you will get the NS Paragon R armored sports car. So in total, that roughly pays off what you paid for the penthouse in the first place. But beyond that, there's really no other ways to make money. So this one is near the bottom of the list. Next is the high end apartment. Now these ones actually did get a pretty big buff in 2022. If you don't know the high end apartment, Department let you start up five different heists. The Fleecer Job, Prison Break, the Humane Labs Raid, Series A Funding, and the Pacific Standard. All of these got sizable payout increases in the middle of this year in 2022, but even then, they're still some of the worst paying activities in the game. On top of that, these heists take a really long time to complete, and you need four players to do them. And if you've played much GTA Online, you know relying on three other players is never going to be a great option. So this one is quite comfortably in the bottom bottom half of properties. The next three slots are taken up by three other MC businesses. Weed, Cash, and the Meth Lab. Just like the Document Forgery office, all of these will make you passive income and taking into account that you would theoretically have all of the upgrades for this business, plus taking into consideration the cost of buying supplies. The Weed Farm will make you $34,000 an hour, Cash will make you $38,000 an hour, and the Lab will make you just over $41,000 an hour. As you can see, we're starting to get into a bit more of respectable territory in terms of profit per hour. But with all that said, and even with the buffs that the payouts for these businesses got in 2022, I don't think you would find many people that wouldn't be quite content with putting them in the bottom half of properties in the game, which is where they belong. Next, I've got the Vehicle Warehouse. Now, this business actually just got a buff in 2022, where before you wouldn't get any additional money. Now you can sell these vehicles in public lobbies, and now you're going to get a high demand bonus, which is a 2% pay increase for every other player that's in your lobby. Most players should be able to sell at least two high-end vehicles an hour with the vehicle warehouse. That alone is going to net you $160,000 profit per hour. But if we add in the fact that now you can get a high demand bonus with these vehicles when you sell them, you're looking at upwards of $200,000 an hour. Not bad. On my list next is the final MC business we haven't spoke about. It's the Coke Locker. 
With all the upgrades and if you're buying supplies, the Coke lockup will make you just over $63,000 an hour. Now I know if you're not really familiar with these businesses, that's gonna sound crazy. Why is this business above the hangar that can make you $200,000 an hour? Well, that's because these businesses are passive. You only actually need to do anything for these businesses every couple of hours. So to make it simple to understand, they're basically just both completely different ways of making money. Even with the buffs in 2022, the Coke lockup has definitely fallen from grace. A few years ago, everyone would have agreed that this was one of the best businesses in the game. But since then, Rockstar has just added a lot more better ways to make money. So the Coke lockup is now, unfortunately, just about average, which is a bit of a shame. The next business on the list is another one that's been a little bit overshadowed by all the new properties coming into the game. It's the Crate Warehouse. Now this is still a pretty good way to make money. Most players should be able to get at least $200,000 an hour with this one. Maybe even over $250,000 to $300,000 an hour if you're pretty good at it. The crate warehouse is pretty simple. Just like the hangar business, your job is to source crates, go out and steal them, bring them back, and then sell them for more money in the future. But in the middle of 2022, Rockstar also added a technician in each of your warehouses that can go and do this job for you once every 48 minutes if you pay them $7,500. So not only can you actively make money for this business while going out and sourcing crates on your own, but you can also make money passively now by paying your technicians to go and get you more crates. A great way to make money with the crate warehouse is to fill up all of your crate warehouses and wait for a double or triple money event week. That's a really effective way to make millions and millions of dollars. But outside of that though, if you're not making use of these events when they come around, unfortunately the crate warehouse is still just a pretty good business and not so much a great one. Next we have the facility, kind of a tough property to rank. In 2022, these got a massive payout increase as well, which means now completing Act 3 Three, which is the final doomsday heist, you can get $2.25 million. The problem is for most players, this will take at least two hours, maybe even three if you're not using glitches. And this heist is not a solo heist, so you will need to share the final cut with another player. Once you take all of that into consideration, yeah, both players are probably gonna be making close to a million dollars for about two to three hours work. Kind of hard to rank the profits on this one because it depends how well you know the heists and how good you are at them, but I would say most players can make anywhere between three to five hundred thousand dollars per hour with this heist. I know that's a wide range, but it's just going to vary from player to player. Next up is the bunker. I wasn't really too sure where to put this one, but I've got it just above the coke lockup. The bunker can do a lot of different things, including unlock you a lot of things if you do the research. But for this video, we're talking about money and just like all of the other passive businesses we've gone over, taking into consideration if you have all of the upgrades and your buying supplies, you can expect to make just under $60,000 an hour with the bunker. So why do I have this one above the coke lockup? Well, now in 2022 and beyond, you can also complete an ammunition supply run. You can do one of these every 48 minutes. It's only going to take you, I'd say, three to five minutes to complete, and you're going to get $50,000 for doing that one. So that's an extra $50,000 an hour you can make if you want to. And for that reason, it's just slightly above the locker. We're moving into some really, really good properties now. Next up on the list is the auto shop. There are three different ways to make money with the auto shop. Let's go through them on worst to best. So the worst way to make money with the auto shop is through the exotic exports list. Each day when you're driving around the map, a blue dot will pop up every once in a while with the location of an exotic exports card that you can steal and deliver to the docks for $20,000. That's not bad, that can be pretty fun to do every once in a while, but that's not really serious money. The next way to make money with the auto shop is through the auto shop business itself, modding customers' cars and delivering them back to them. You can either drive the car back to the customer yourself, or you can pay your staff in the workshop to do it for you. You're not going to quite make as much money per sale if you do it that way, but it also means you're not going to have to waste time driving all the way across the map. If you come back to your auto shop once an hour and modify and get your staff to deliver the vehicles to the customers, pretty confident in saying you can make at least $50,000 an hour just doing that. And the final and most effective way to make money with the auto shop is through the contracts. Completely 
completing any of the contracts in the auto shop will get you about $170,000 on average. These contracts shouldn't even take half an hour to complete though for the average player. So already there, you're making over $300,000 an hour. But there's also one contract in the auto shop that pays you at $300,000 per contract. That's the union depository contract. The funny thing is you can just continue resetting your contract until you get the one you want. So if you do the union depository twice an hour, you can comfortably make over $600,000 an hour with the auto shop. That well and truly cements it in the next tier of businesses, and it only gets even better from here. Next, just above the auto shop, I'm gonna put the newest business in the game, the salvage yard. And I think most players should be able to make over 400, maybe even above $500,000 an hour with this business. There's a couple ways you can make money with the salvage yard. The main one is through vehicle robberies. Each week you can steal vehicles in what is basically a heist. Not quite as long as a heist, but it's close. You'll have a scope out mission, a few setup missions, some free mode missions, and then a finale. The payout of these depends on the vehicle you're stealing. Some of them are in the mid 200,000s, and others can be around 400,000. Most players can definitely get this done in under one hour with a bit of practice. Not to mention the fact that you can actually buy the vehicles you steal instead of selling them. You can buy them for a discounted price. Now for anyone watching this in the first week, I've uploaded this video. That feature's not out yet. That will be coming out in week two, I believe. And then if you own a document forgery office, you can buy the vehicle for even cheaper again. So this business can not only be a good way to make money, but also a good way to save money on some vehicles you want. Then you add in the tow truck missions where you go out, steal vehicles, bring them back to your salvage yard where your staff can salvage them for money. You can have two vehicles salvaging at once, which means if you make about $50,000 per salvaged vehicle, you're looking at an extra $100,000 every in-game day, which is 48 minutes. But that's not all. You also add in the fact that there is a safe in your office in the salvage yard that can make you a bit of extra money as well. Yeah, the salvage yard's not bad at all. Next on the list is the Arcade. This one lets you start up the Diamond Casino Heist, which can make you some pretty serious money if you know what you're doing. If you're running the Diamond Casino Heist as a duo, you can comfortably take over $2 million per heist. Even if you're splitting that 50-50 with your partner, you're making at least a million dollars a heist, and most players should be able to complete the Diamond Casino Heist in under 90 minutes if you know what you're doing. Honestly, 90 minutes is pretty generous. A lot of players can do it even faster than that, so yeah. Yeah, if you've got a buddy and you want to grind a business, this is a pretty good one to do. On top of that, the arcade also has the master control terminal inside where you can operate all of your other businesses from the one spot. So that's a really nice feature that, if you think about it, is actually going to make you more money because you don't have to fly out to all of your other businesses and operate them from there. So yeah, the arcade, really, really good business. Definitely still in the top tier. At number four on the list is the second best passive business in the game. It's the Acid Lab. This business can make you over $60,000 an hour completely passively, which actually puts it at similar numbers to things like the bunker and the coke lockup. But the thing that puts this business over the edge is the fact that all of the sale missions for this business are directed towards solo players. So where for the bunker and coke lockup, for example, you might have three sale vehicles that can take you 20 minutes to complete a sale, the Acid Lab is only ever going to spawn you one sale vehicle, which means you can complete the sale mission in about five minutes. All up, this is a very simple and profitable business to run. Rockstar looked at all of the feedback from businesses like the nightclub, MC businesses, and Bunker, and made a business that is really good for solo players. The Acid Lab is as close to a must-own business as you can get, and considering it's very cheap to get as well, this is one that almost all players should own. We are well and truly in the must-own category. These are properties that you need to own if you want to make lots and lots of money in the game. We have the agency. There are a ton of ways you can make money with the agency, so let's go through them all. One of the least effective ways is through the safe that's in your office in the agency. And initially, this isn't going to make you much money at all. But for every five security contracts you complete, the safe is going to make you an additional $500 per hour. That continues stacking up to 200 security contracts. So once you complete 200 security contracts, that safe is going to make you $20,000 an hour forever. 
The next way, as I mentioned just before, is security contracts. These contracts are honestly very easy to complete. They're gonna make you at least $30,000, up to potentially $70,000 if you get one that's on the harder difficulty. These contracts really only take you about five minutes to complete, maybe 10 minutes at most. So that right there is pretty good money. The third way to make money with the agency is through payphone hits. You can call Franklin, request a payphone hit, and he'll give you a short mission to complete. This is only gonna give you $15,000, but he's also gonna give you a challenge, a different way to complete the mission if you choose to do so. If you complete that challenge, which is always pretty simple, he's gonna pay you an extra $70,000, which means if you complete the payphone hit and the challenge, which is only gonna take you somewhere between three and five minutes most of the time, you are gonna get $85,000. That is insane. And that's not even the best way to make money. The best way to make money with the agency is the contract, the Dr. Dre contract. This contract will pay you $1 million on the dot. And for most players, this should take you about an hour and a half to two hours to complete. It would be a lot quicker than that, but unfortunately you can't skip the cutscenes, which is, you know, pretty annoying. Rockstar, hopefully we can change that. So taking into account the four different ways you can make money with this business, not even to mention the fact, because we're only really talking about money, the fact that you can get your own personal armory and Amani tech vehicles, which are insane. Yeah, this is well and truly a must own business. In this spot, I'm gonna put the hangar. The hangar has been heavily updated and the pay has been massively increased. This happened in the middle of 2023. Now, of course, watch my full guide for the hangar in the link in the description below if you wanna know how to do this, but experienced players should actually be able to make somewhere around $700,000 an hour with this. If you don't know how the hangar works, you basically source vehicles through the computer inside your hangar, go out, steal the crate, bring them back and then sell them later on for more money. But what makes these so good now is Rockstar in the middle of 2023 added land missions. Previously, you could only do air missions. So now you can do both source and sell missions via land, which are actually twice as fast, maybe even faster than that when compared to the air missions. Using the hangar now is easier and faster than ever, which means you're gonna get more money. But that's not all with the hangar. Of course, it's very useful because, well, it's a hangar and you need somewhere to store your aircraft, so this is the place. Overall, the hangar is definitely an awesome business, definitely a top five business in the game, and it belongs right here on the list. The second best property or business to own in all of GTA Online is the nightclub. It is genuinely insane how good this business is now. We have spoke about passive businesses a lot. And like I said before, the second best passive business in the game is the Acid Lab, which is gonna make you about $60,000 an hour. The nightclub blows that out of the water. The first passive way to make money with the nightclub is through the safe that's in your office. If you can keep your nightclub popularity full, which shouldn't be too hard for anyone, really, that safe alone is gonna pay you $50,000 every in-game day, which is 48 minutes real time. So that on its own is making you about $60,000 an hour, which already matches the Acid Lab. And that's not even mentioning the nightclub warehouse, which is another incredible way to make money with the nightclub. At its maximum output, meaning you have the five technicians working on the best possible businesses in your nightclub warehouse, the warehouse is also gonna make you somewhere around that fifty to $60,000 an hour range as well. So yes, all up, almost completely passively, the nightclub is gonna make you $100,000 an hour. Genuinely insane and absolutely a must own business, whether you're a brand new player or you're a player who has 10,000 hours. Then at number one is the Kasatka Submarine. Yes, I know the Cayo Perico heist keeps getting nerfed. It's been nerfed almost into the ground, but what's crazy is it's still the best way to make money in the game. Yes, Rockstar did put a massive cooldown on the heist. If you're doing it solo, you have to wait almost three hours to do the heist again. They also massively decreased the amount of money you're gonna make, which means now as a solo player, you're not gonna be making $1.5 million per heist anymore, only somewhere around 1 million, but still 
still, the fact that you can make about a million dollars in only one hour of work is something that you can't do anywhere else in the game. And for that reason, the Kasatka is still number one. You probably noticed that I didn't mention the CEO office or the MC clubhouse. And the reason for that is while these are kind of businesses, they don't really stand on their own. You kind of just need them to buy other businesses. So for that reason, I don't really think I could correctly rank them. So we'll wrap the video up there. If you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up, consider subscribing for more stuff like this. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Boys. Stop.